Hello people, in this video we want to look at endoscopic sinus surgery. Uh, it is uh, functional endoscopic sinus surgery, so FESS. So something to do with your paranasal sinuses. Endoscopically they are going, that means um, using the endoscope. Functional means they are going to restore the functionality of your uh, sinuses. So this is more like a functional endoscopic sinus surgery. Basically people here, earlier there were lot of surgeries, you know like a Caldwell look operation, frontal sinus operation, external ethmoidectomy, etc. But now all these, whatever these indications were there for these surgeries, now everything is being made by endoscopic surgery. So all these surgeries are replaced with endoscopic surgery. Endoscopic surgery is minimally invasive, it doesn't require skin incision, he is going via the nose, right? You don't need to remove any intervening bones, etc. So you can just uh, go via the endoscope, via the nose, so nasal endoscopy, right? In the sinuses, ventilation and drainage of the sinuses is established. So, you will establish the ventilation and drainage of the sinuses. How? By preserving the nasal and sinus mucosa. And its uh, function of mucociliary clearance also you will restore. Is that the function of the mucosa? Okay. So, basically let us look at this photo in a little detail then maybe. See, they are going via the nose. Right? And they are looking at some image there. And they are working on it. Right? Endoscopic surgery in progress. Endoscope and other surgical instruments are passed through the nose and surgery performed by looking at the monitor. So, this is the endoscopic surgery. So, they are going via the nose. So, why has this been possible to replace so many surgeries etc? Because of uh, better de optics. So, basically they are uh, giving credit to physics and, uh, and uh, engineering. Better optics, brighter illumination, right? Then what else? You have so many microsurgical instruments. So, you can work with these endoscopes and you can precisely remove tissue without stripping mucosa. Concomitant developments in imaging techniques. So, you have CT, MRI to precisely define the area of pathology. Then you have these uh, soft tissue shavers called as micro debriders. So, these are some micro debriders are some tools right to remove nasal polyps, soft tissue masses, mucosa etc. Everything you can remove. See, these all uh, micro debrises, they will reduce bleeding to a great extent. When you have bone cutting drills also, so you can uh, remove any bone, uh, bony obstruction. Okay, so you have some bone cutting drills also, you can remove any bony obstruction. So, latest advancement they are saying is computer based image guided navigation surgery. Right, so you can uh, computer based, uh, computer assisted image guiding. Okay, guidance. So, all this will help you. Some new instruments, endoscope, optics, um, what else, computer, CT, MRI, micro debrider, bone cutting drills, everything finally helps you makes this make the surgery possible. Look at this. How do you pronounce this? Zomed, Somed. Micro debrider used in FESS. See this? This is a micro debrider. So, it has suction, which is one. One is a suction, guys. This is the suction, one. Two is the irrigation tube. So, something is coming in here. Something is going out here. Suction, irrigation. Three is blade. And you have various type of blades. And the number one, which is the straight blade, is used for FESS. For FESS, they are using only the straight blade. So, this one and all you use for what? Maxillary, sinus and adenoidectomy, etc. Which are bent. But straight one they are using for FESS. My so, you understood right, micro debrider with this blade. Look at these, some instruments used in FESS. So, here you have the probe. Then here you have the sickle knife. Here you have the curved suction. Here you have the straight Beckesley forceps. Curved Beckesley forceps. Forcep only, right? This one is retrograde true cut forcep, a curate, straight curate and lastly a J-shaped curate. So, did you get it guys? You really don't, at this moment you don't need to know this but so many instruments also we told you. So, these are all are enabling the surgery and the main thing that's en enabling is what? Endoscope. So, this is an endoscope with fiber optic raw, uh, cord. So, what are the indications for this FES surgery guys? You can write almost everything, okay. So, first of all, let us see. Whenever there is sinusitis, right? 
look at this one first of all sinusitis you write off i think that will be easy to write because you are doing the sinus surgery right functional endoscopic sinus surgery so sinusitis you will write again sinusitis is there here again sinusitis is there here what else everything is sinusitis only then okay so now let us catch the sinusitis wait so bacterial sinusitis which is chronic unresponsive to medical treatment then you have acute bacterial sinusitis which is recurrent then you have polypoid rhino sinusitis okay this is diffuse nasal polyposis then you have fungal sinusitis with fungal ball or nasal polyp okay so these are all the ones which have the word sinusitis sinusitis in them then you have anthracoanal polyp this is nothing but coming from the maxillary sinus right then you have the mucosal of frontoethmoid or sphenoid sinus so this is coming from the frontoethmoid or sphenoid sinus some mucosal then you have control of epistaxis by endoscopic cautery so epistaxis if somebody has nose bleeds so they are going to do some cautery you can remove foreign body also it seems and endoscopic septoplasty so nasal septum if you want to do some surgery you can do this uh, endoscopic uh, septoplasty i think these two are also related to sinus only so we'll keep them here so sinusitis bacterial chronic acute rhino sinusitis polypoid rhino sinusitis rhino is nothing but nose so nose and sinus same thing polypoid basically na nasal polyposis they are talking about fungal sinusitis which has fungal ball or nasal polyp okay then anthracoanal polyp mucosal of frontoethmoid or sphenoid sinus then epistaxis foreign body septoplasty okay those three are not, they are not exactly referring to the sinus there okay they want to remove a foreign body they want to control epistaxis they want to do septoplasty okay so what advanced things you can do with the uh, nasal endoscopic techniques let us see so guys basic things you understood right what and all they will do with this uh, an, a functional endoscopic sinus surgery so anything related to sinus like frontal sinus uh, any problem maxillary sinus any problem so rhino sinusitis which is bacterial fungal nasal polyps anthracoanal polyp then what else you saw fungal a uh, ball fungal sinusitis right then what other three things you saw epistaxis cautery they'll do foreign body removal they will do any septoplasty surgery they will do okay now we will move to this one in advanced things that you can do you can remove tumors guys benign tumors like inverted papilloma angiofibromas you can remove orbital abscess can you imagine the orbital um, uh, look at this they are even talking about orbital abscess they can remove wow cellulitis also they can manage dacryocystorhinostomy so if the lacrimal sac right here um, uh, so they want to connect this uh, puncta and canaliculi to directly to middle meatus right so from lacrimal sac they will connect to middle meatus so they can do that one dacryocystorhinostomy so if there's any problem in the drainage at the nld if the nasolacrimal duct is having problem they can do the surgery right then A repair of uh, CSF leak. So, if there is a CSF leak, can you imagine if there's a cerebrospinal fluid leak, they can fix that. Wow! Pituitary surgery. Wow! They are going through the nose and fixing your pituitary gland. Wow! So you can imagine, right? Get, exactly. Can you position it from the nose? If you go inside, you can even reach the uh, via the cella turcica. Looks like, right? just imagine the structures when you go via the nose what and all you can access right the orbit you can access the pituitary gland right nice here it's kind of interesting right and that too without a skin incision then orbital decompression for graves disease optic nerve decompression so this is becoming like ophthalmology part of ent right Uh, especially this one dacryocystorhinostomy optic nerve decompression orbital decompression for graves disease everything right then posterior epistaxis also you can uh, control why only anterior even posterior also you can do uh, endoscopic uh, what is it endoscopic clipping of the sphenopalatine artery they talking about the sphenopalatine artery guys here it is <clears throat> it also supplies the little area but in the posterior uh, epistaxis also they are talking about the uh, endoscopic clipping of the sphenopalatine artery coenal atresia behind the nose uh, 
in the nasal cavity there can be a membrane coenal atresia so even that they can remove that membrane or uh, make it patent or something so basically these are the advanced things that you can do so what are the advanced things that you can do by going by the nose reach the pituitary orbit uh, optic nerve uh, dacryocyst or rhinostomy then what else can you do guys uh, can you say yeah posterior epistaxis you can control then you can remove benign tumors you can remove this if there is coenal atresia you can fix that then what else can you fix let's see did we cover everything yeah looks like we cover csf leak yeah this one we forgot csf leak also you can fix okay guys did you understand the uh, uses of uses of what functional endoscopic sinus surgery can you say functional functional endoscopic endoscopic sinus sinus surgery surgery fess Okay, let's look at the contraindications now. So people should be extremely uh, skilled in all this, right? They should uh, know about these instruments, etc. And um, some diseases are not accessible by endoscopic procedures. So let us look at these. So there are some limitations, like lateral frontal sinus disease. So frontal sinus, but the lateral part looks like. Okay, touch your frontal sinus part and see the lateral. Obviously, via the nose, if you go, I think you cannot reach the lateral. Uh, part of the frontal sinus and stenosis of internal opening of frontal sinus so exactly frontal sinus has some limitations looks like stenosis of the internal opening okay then osteomyelitis obviously osteomyelitis and all bone and all you cannot manipulate right because of this bone disease then threatened intracranial or intraorbital complication so if there is any intracranial or intraorbital complications that you feel will happen then you should not do this surgery okay so can you say the contraindications like um, intracranial intra uh, orbital any threatened complications then you should not do if there is um, uh, what uh, some frontal sinus lateral disease or uh, some internal opening of the frontal sinus is stenosed or uh, then what else did we see if there is not no proper instruments or there is not so much experience and osteomyelitis don't forget so you should not do osteomyelitis in osteomyelitis okay so anesthesia what anesthesia they will give here they will give general anesthesia local also can be used when you have limited work to do okay so what is the position the patient will lie supine with head resting on a ring or a headrest some prefer to raise it by 15 degree how do you think this patient is um, positioned guys do you think the head is risen uh, by 15 degree we can't see any ring on which the person's head is or the headrest we are not able to see here but this is the position just supine you can remember it's pretty simple techniques now you there are some techniques surgical techniques are there anterior to posterior posterior to anterior so anterior to posterior if you are going stamberger's techniques okay stamberger's technique posterior to anterior wigand technique guys uh, focus here we are looking at the techniques you can go anterior to posterior stamberger's technique this they are saying from uncinate process backward to the sphenoid sinus that means what you people feel so something like this this is uncinate process from here they will go backward to sphenoid sinus that's it this is anterior to posterior next technique is some y gans technique posterior to anterior how he'll go here from the spinoid sinus he'll go and proceed anteriorly along the base of skull and medial orbital wall so he starts at spinoid sinus so obviously it is uh, posterior to anterior so simple okay guys uh, focus here this is mostly done in extensive polyposis or in revisional sinus surgery so whenever there is too much polyposis or they are doing revision surgery so i think they go front and then come back as a revision what do you say guys revision sinus surgery revisional so two techniques you got now let us see the steps of the operation what else is left you know steps we will see then uh, some uncinectomy then uh, what is this bullectomy so many things are there we will look at this steps of operation something here sphenoidotomy nasal packs so how the surgery exactly they do we have to look at post operative care how will you care for the patient 
complications that can arise because of this fest surgery. So all that you have to read, right? Let's do one thing. Let's continue the steps and complications and all in the next video. For now, we just take a recap of what we saw. We saw functional endoscopic sinus surgery. We saw wh what it has replaced. It has replaced this Caldwell look, frontal sinus operation, external ethmoidectomy and all it has replaced. It is minimally in invasive. You don't need screen incision or removal of intervening bone to access the disease. Some bone they will have to remove though. And uh, the mucosa you can retain. So ventilation of and the drainage of sinuses you can establish even by retaining the nasal and sinus mucosa. And uh, the function of these uh, the mucociliary clearance, everything you can retain. So this is all possible because of better optics, better illumination, better microsurgical instruments, endoscope, CT, MRI, micro debriders to remove these uh, nasal polyps, tissues, etc. You have bone cutting drills which are available to remove bony destruction and you have computer based image guided navigation, right? So all this makes this uh, endoscopic surgery possible. So the, here, uh, here is the micro debrider zoom in, right? With a straight blade that you can see here. Then uh, these are some instruments that are used in FES surgery. This is the endoscope with fiber optic cord. Indications, you will use it for all types of sinusitis, chronic bacterial sinusitis, acute bacterial sinusitis, which is recurrent, which you cannot manage, all that. Then uh, polypoid rhinosinusitis, this is diffuse nasal polyposis, fungal sinusitis with fungal ball or nasal polypi, anthracoanal polyps, mucosal or frontoethmoid or spinoid sinus. To control epistaxis, uh, by, you'll do pottery, you'll remove foreign body, you can do septoplasty. Not just this, so many advanced techniques, so, so many advanced things you can do nowadays with this endoscopic techniques. Can you imagine you can remove benign tumors and you can go to the orbit also and remove, uh, you know, you can manage this orbital abscess and cellulitis. You can do dacryocystorhinostomy. You can do optic nerve decompression, orbital decompression for Graves disease. So all those are ophthalmology things. You can do some uh, central nervous system things, repair of CS leak, uh, CSF leak, pituitary surgery you can do. Wow, interesting, right? If there is a posterior epistaxis, you can do endoscopic uh, clipping of the spinopalatine artery. You can, and coenal atresia, if it is there, you can uh, handle that. Okay, fix that. Contraindications where you don't do this. If uh, there is inexperience or lack of all these instruments that you need. Some diseases are inaccessible even with this procedure like lateral frontal sinus disease, stenosis of the internal opening of the frontal sinus. So with frontal sinus, there seem to be a little limitation. Osteomyelitis bone disease you should not do because... Uh, uh, bone disease usually they don't want to manipulate any bone intracranial and intraorbital complications if, if you feel that you may land up with an intracranial or an intra uh, orbital complications you should not do this surgery okay anesthesia they'll give general uh, mostly preferred local if you have very minimal work to do position is just supine uh, you raise it by 15 degree if you require the head techniques you have anterior to posterior stam burgers technique and posterior to anterior is Wigand. So, when will you go Stam Burgers? Show me Stam Burgers. Stam Burgers is from the Ancinate process to spinot uh, sinus. This is a Stam Burger. Then this uh, spinot sinus uh, forward. This is the y Wigand's theory. So, it is from spinot sinus proceeds anteriorly along the base of skull and medial orbital wall. Just remember this is uh, done when there is extensive polyposis and in revisional sinus surgery. So, when you are studying forward, you will study forward. Then when they are revising, they are coming backwards. Okay. Steps of operation, we have to look at. So, steps of operation, you have to look at all this. We will look at it in the next video. Some uh, unsynectomy, spinoidotomy. So, many terminologies are there here. Unsynectomy, bullectomy. All this we have to look at. Post-operative care, we have to look at. And complications also we have to look at. Okay. So that's all for now in this video guys. We'll meet you in the next video. Bye-bye.